Welcome to the session on analysing your financials. As business owners, we need to understand it's really important that we make sure that our business is making money. And obviously the more profit that we get from our business, the better off we are financially. And to ensure that this happens, we need to ma maintain a really good financial process and a financial reporting process. And we need to understand that there are a number of parts of our financials where we can get this information from. Every year we provide a financial statement to the ATO where they assess what tax we're required to pay. But also we have an opportunity to do similar sort of analysis internally over time. So things we really do need to look at are things like overheads. They're the costs we have incur running our business. Gross profit. Gross profit is the difference between our sales and what it costs us to deliver a product. And quite often there are material costs and sometimes there are labour costs and, and other direct costs associated with selling a product. Now, when we think about gross profit, those material costs or direct costs that we are incur, think of them as if we increase our sales by one, that cost is going to increase proportionally. So we need to make sure that we're applying the cost in the right place. The other one is obviously around sales. But sales are usually related directly to the quality of the product that we sell and also to the price. And of course, ultimately, we start looking at what profit we're going to get out of the business. And that's net profit, or in some cases, it's retained earnings, depending on how we report. And the last thing that we need to look at is around our equity, because obviously the more equity we have in our business, the better we can leverage that equity to make more money. So how do we do that? So we look at all the ratios and we create a, an analytical table where we can say our overheads to our sales is 60%, or we can say our gross profit or our cost of sales to our sales is 20%. And then we can look at that and say, okay, well, how do we perform over time? Now, the really good part about analyzing it as a, as a ratio ra as opposed to direct cost, it means that we can then compare our business against our nearest competitors or our peers. So from that perspective, it's really important that we understand how we look at this. So I tend to use a bell curve because bell curves are really good. So effectively with a bell curve, what happens is, it, that's the reason why it's called a bell curve. It looks like it's a bell and it around the average. So here's the average. So when we look at all the businesses doing a particular, delivering a particular product or service that you are, all those businesses, there will be businesses whose their cost of sales, for example, uh, over here or cost of sales over here. Now we know from data that's provided by ATO and varying other sources that there's about a 12 to 13 percent difference between here and here. Now if you're a business, and this is the really bad end of the scale, if you're a business then effectively your competitors are buying their, buying their, their material cost or their labour at about 13% less than you are. And that directly relates to profit. So we have to really understand how to work that out. Now the other one is our overheads. Again, the same thing. There's about a 12 to 13% difference between your the best performing business with regard to overheads and the worst performing business. So when you combine those two together, there's about a 24% difference between the best and the worst. So from your business perspective, if you're performing at the bad end of the scale, about a 24 or 26% margin on your profits. So your competitors are effectively pricing their product at that level cheaper. So we need to understand that how we're going to change and do the things we need to do. So there's a couple of things that we can look at. So once, once we identify where we sit within the bell curve and how we operate, we can then say, okay, what do we do about that? There are a number of services available to us to be able to compare ourselves with our peers. Now the first one is the ATO, the Australian Tax Office. They have a number of tables in at the tax office which you can just log on and just find out how you compare. And the good thing about the ATO, not only will it give you the average, of the overheads, cost of sales, and those sorts of things. It will also give you the range. 
Now that's the reason it does give you these ranges. That's one of the reasons why I know there's about a 24 to 26% difference between the best and the worst. So it's a good place to start. The other place to look at, there's commercially available benchmarking software. Now, if you're interested, I can provide some of that to you if you, if you want to give me a call. So there's benchmarking. Peer to peer. So that's effectively you're benchmarking yourselves against your competitors. The other one is you can log on to the Queensland State Library and they have a access to a, a, a reporting site called Ibis World. Now Ibis World will give you some really interesting data as well. So that's Ibis World. And lastly, the one that I find most important from a business perspective is time series. Now time series effectively is you comparing your own business internally over time. Now you can either do it on a year by year basis, which I recommend, because that way then, or at least the starting point, that way you can compare yourself how you perform between from one year to the next. So the idea is that you hope that your performance in one area will go up, such as your gross profit, and go down, such as your overheads and sales, obviously. They're the two things that you need to, when you're doing internally, that you're able to make some comparisons over time. The other one which I suggest you do you can look at, at how to, to manage some of this information internally, and you can do it on a month-by-month -month basis. You can't record some of those balance sheet type data, because it, generally your balance sheet's created every 12 months, because we have things like depreciation, we have other things that we have to be brought into the, the balance sheet to be able to show how we're performing. But from a month-by-month -month basis, we can do a lot of time series, especially around gross profit and sales. And that will give us the net retained earnings for the business. So from a business perspective, we need to look at how we're going to analyse our financials to ensure that we make the most out of our financial resources and make more profit. Thank you. If you're interested, give me a call. My phone number is 0427 008 657. I can be contacted by my email on john at c2csolutions.com.au. Thank you very much and hopefully we'll have a chat.